Hey guys, it's Shane, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make UK based music. So, as always, you can get the project file and samples and MIDI and presets and all that kind of stuff from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it will all be available shortly. It might already be available. And yeah, let's get started. This is loop here in the intro. We're at 130 BPM, and basically we have a collection of groups inside of groups here. The first group that we have is basses, and the first thing I'm going to show you are these mid-range basses, which sound like this. So basically, the way this works is you have all your mid-range basses like this, like kind of the top end, you know, the stuff that you hear. And then underneath that, actually inside of the basses group, but outside of the mid-range bass group, we have a sub. So it's just kind of like laying those two on top of each other. And then we have some processing on both of them. But yeah, so this is the mid-range basses. I'm just going to go down the line here. The first one sounds like this. And this is made using FM. This is how all of these are made, actually. What we have here is operator, hence the FM. And we just actually have three sound waves, just doing some FM synthesis. You can see I've got these at different octaves, and then I've also got the second one detuned a little, so that kind of makes it more interesting. I've got those going into a low pass here, which has an envelope on it, and I've got the attack up as well, so it's just kind of like... Yeah. Opening up there, um, and then that's going into this amp, and the amp, so without this, it sounds like this. You can hear the amp is very important. Basically, it takes this kind of cool sound that we have coming out of the FM that's just kind of dull and like really blows it out, distorts it, and gives it a lot more harmonic content. The next sound we have here is the second bass, which sounds like this. So, this is also made using FM. I'm pretty sure all of these are made using FM. And yeah, this one is also just three sine waves. With this one, we have a pitch envelope. So, that's just making it go like. And also the detuning is a bit stronger on this one. So the last one was detuned a little, but the detuning here is giving it that kind of like crunchy effect if I turn it off. So yeah, and then that's also going into a low pass filter with a very similar envelope to the first one. And then I've got that going into an amp as well to distort it, make it more harmonically rich. And the next sound we have here is this bass. So what this is, is just, again, more FM synthesis, uh, three sine waves. You can see the envelopes are very important here. Like, the key here is the way you set these. I always say this when people ask, like, how to approach designing sounds. I learned this from Zen World. But it's like, the envelopes are the first thing you should think of. Like, you always, the way you tackle it, basically, is you just kind of start to figure out, like, what are the most important things, and then identify those first, and then start doing it. And that's here, the envelopes. Very important, like the way the sound is shaped. And especially with like how these are all modulating each other with just the volume basically, you can get a lot out of the envelopes. And typically like when people do FM synthesis, that's that's what you that's what you work with. So this one also is going into a low pass. You can see the envelope on that is very similar. And then we have it being distorted. Pretty much all of these are being distorted with an amp. Amp is a really good way to get like a more interesting distortion like if I just use the overdrive on all of these you know we get it's just like distortion it's the most simple version of it which is good for some applications but here we really want color and character so the amp is a good way to do that it's just more nuanced the next thing we have here is this bass so this is also FM synthesis. You can see the way that I've done a lot of these is just by chopping up the MIDI as well. Like I, I just started with a simple MIDI. I'm pretty sure it was this one. And then you can see I made all of these just from chopping that up. And also, like, I'll talk about the arrangement a little bit too. All these bases I'm showing you now are just ones that hit like at the start of every four bars pretty much. That's kind of the dynamic here is you want to have these these ones and then you go into like the main base you don't want to have it be just the main main base if you do that it gets boring these are like the extra third ear candy layers if i turn them all off it just feels like it's missing something so when we add these really brings it to life but yeah so this one is just again fm synthesis lots of envelope work 
going into a low pass filter and this one I also have a pitch envelope on so this is making you like well well if I turn it off it's a lot more just kind of like straight and simple after that I have a bit of chorus the chorus helps to make this kind of like just deeper sounding and get it away from like the dry synth sound and then we have an amp on there giving it some distortion and that is it for that bass the next thing that we have here are these three layers which all together sound like this and these are sort of like the main bass <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the ASMR drinking sounds there. Anyway, the first layer that we have here is this bass, which sounds like this. So this you can hear is sort of like that main like high end bass. The idea here is we're kind of like stacking, stacking the layers, but we're trying to stack the layers to complement each other. So that's what this one's doing. It's playing like kind of the high end, and then we have some like low mid-range and some mid-range so with this one and just FM you can see we have like a square wave and I believe yeah a saw wave see the envelope there and then a sine wave and then with this one I have some automation with the chorus pitch actually you can see so this is one of the cool things about FM you know just automating stuff like the pitch or like the volume can get you such a different sound and this is cool for drops because you can have sort of like your sounds evolving as opposed to just having like a million different sounds like it's better to have one sound that you take your time with and then it kind of like changes over the course of the track as opposed to having like you know to make it interesting just going to a different sound so yeah, we got a low pass filter as well on that with a bit of an envelope. After that, we have some chorus. Same thing as that other bass, you know, just kind of like making it a bit deeper, giving it some more dimension. And then that's going into an amp. That's the distortion for this one. This is, again, for like getting character and color, this is very good for these type of basses. After that, we have a reverb. And with this, you can see I've got the size and the K time down. This is the key with this one. If I turn it off, it's just kind of giving it some space. You know, it brings it to life a little bit more. Um, and yeah, the key is just to turn the size and the K-time down. So it's like a small room as opposed to like a huge, you know, chamber or something like that. And then after that, we just have an EQ8 cutting out the lawn. The next thing that we have here is this little brass, which sounds like this. So what's happening here is we have a sample of some brass, some symphonic type stuff, and I've got it in a sample here, and you can see we have a filter with an envelope on it. So this is kind of like how you would set up a synth, you know, it's like, it's making you like, well, as opposed to just don't. And yeah, and then with this one, the real thing is the transposition automation. Like, it's kind of like how I was automating the chorus pitch on that other synth. Because now it's like... You can hear it's kind of like playing off of the other stuff musically. It gets interesting, and then at the end. So, that was kind of how I did that. Like, I guess you could just put in different notes. <laughs> But I thought it was easier to just have them all playing the same MIDI, so I just did it that way. So then after that, we have a bit of chorus as well as a bit of reverb. These are just kind of giving it, you know, the same thing, like a bit more space. We've got the chorus, and then the reverb is very short on this one, just like with that other bass. After that, we have a drum bus kind of fattening it up a bit more. You can hear it helps it really, like, stand out in the mix. And then the last thing we have here is just a high pass filter to cut out some line. And yeah, the next thing that we have here is this third layer of the bass, which sounds like this. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm still overcoming a cold here. Anyway, yeah, so that is that bass. This one is just a simple FM bass, very similar to the other ones you can see. With this one, we have a very high chorus pitch on the second one. 
And then we got that going into a low pass filter. We got an amp on the bass setting. This is good for like when you don't want just like a super sharp distortion. You just want like a bit more fatness and kind of some character. And then the last thing we have on there is an EQ8 cutting out the line. And that is it for that bass. So then on this mid range group, I just have this saturator. <laughs> It's simple, it just helps to tie all those bases together. So then the next thing we got here is a sub, which sounds like this. And this is really simple, it's just a square wave going into a low pass filter. And the reason why you use a square wave is because it's a little bit more audible, like if you just use a sine wave, a sine wave is kind of hard to work with. Sometimes it can be kind of finicky, like when you go from note to note, it can be a little bit quieter on one note and a little bit louder on the other, so. Just taking a square wave and filtering it down like this is a little bit cleaner. And then I just have a bit of saturation on that to fatten it up. And that is it for the sub. I have that in a group with that mid-range bass thing. And what we have on here is just a bit of drum bus to sort of tie them together. You can hear it really just pulls everything together like I said. It makes it all sound like one big bass. And then we just have ZQ8 on here, and this is just giving it a little bit of a low mid-range boost, something I don't usually do, but this just helps to kind of like make the bass a bit fatter, because there are a lot of fat frequencies for the bass around that range. We also have a low end boost for obvious reasons, and then a high end boost to make the basses kind of stand out a bit more. And make them a bit more intense and have some more hype to them. After that we have the kick, which sounds like this. So this is a simple kick. For this style, you know, you usually want these more kind of like clicky, sharp kicks with, you know, some nice fat lawn, but you don't want it to be too long or too, too boomy. So that's what we got going on here. I've got that going through a bit of drum bus. Helps fatten it up. And then I have the CQ8 cutting out some low mid range because with this kick, with this style, you want the kick to be very sharp and clean and those frequencies that I cut there, can get kind of messy if you don't cut them. So yeah, and then I have that in a group with the bases, the low end group. We finally got to the to the final group. The puzzle is complete. Um, so what this is is just a bit of drum bus. Just it's actually quieter with it on, but that's because that's how loud it needs to be in the mix. Like the the loudness is only relative. It doesn't matter. But this is kind of tying everything together. You can hear without it. It's not as strong. So yeah, that is the lawn. And then the next thing that we have here is this little scratch, which sounds like this. This is simple. You know, there are a lot of little like sound effects in the style that are here, so I just wanted to add something. The kind of transition it like that. It helps to make it more interesting. On that, I just have a bit of OTT kind of... Making it a bit more interesting sounding. And then I have a drum bus on there to fan it up as well. Here's what I thought. And with it, you can hear it really like brings it into the track. The next thing we have here is this little uh sample, which sounds like this. So what this is, is, is this sample. Just like a little vocal sample. I've got it in a simpler here. And what I've done is I've warped it. So what's happening here is. That's the original pinch. It sounds normal. But then there are all these high ones. Where it sounds kind of like. It gives it a little bit more of a wonky feel. You know it makes it more interesting. And not just like a basic sample. Uh, the other thing that I have here. Is I have a bit of glide. And then there's like this one part. Where it slides down. Where is it? There we go. So yeah, you know, just kind of like small details makes it more interesting than if it was just going uh, every single time. So yeah, the next thing that we have here is this hi-hat, which sounds like this. This is pretty simple. It's more about the type of sample. With this style, you want like a very bright and kind of sharp hi-hat like this with some nice mid-range as well. If you listen, you can hear this isn't all high-end. It still has some, like, fatness and some body to it, you know? And I've accentuated that with this EQ. I've also got a high-end boost. You can hear it just really brings the sample to life. And yeah, the next thing that we have here is the clap, which is three layers, and it sounds like this. So with this style, you want a very fat clap. Like, when I was putting this up against the reference track, 
and trying to listen to it and see with just like one regular like clap sample, like an 808 or a 909 style clap that you would normally use, it wasn't quite enough. I really had to like layer these together to get the full fatness. I get it to really stand on top of the mix. So what we got going on here is the first layer, which sounds like this. So this is really like the clap. This is where a lot of the mid-range is happening. There's the original sample. And a lot of the body of the sound is. It's just a sample in here. I've got a bit of a high-end boost on it as well. Because you want this to be very sharp and like have a lot of attack to it. And that's where that, you know, that's where that is in the high-end like that. Next layer we have here is this little percussion thing. Which sounds like that. And so this is just like kind of adding to the body a little bit more. You can do this has a lot of attack. It's very like just. <laughs> so yeah, that's in there to again add to the fatness, make it hit a bit harder. You can hear, I'll turn this off. And then there's with it on. It's not even something you notice so much when it is on. But when it's off, you definitely notice. The last layer of the clap we have here, which, sound, which sounds like this. So what this one is, is you can hear, it's just kind of like this nice percussion. It's a bit more resonant and has kind of like a tail to it. So it's just adding kind of some more mid-range to the clap. Like, again, this is one of the things you don't really notice, but here's without it in the mix. And then with it, so you can hear, it really adds to the body of the sound and just completes it. So then I have all that percussion in a group, just like with the kicks and the bass. Just kind of helps to tie everything together when you process it all together. Here's without anything. Doesn't quite stand out, but we're with it. So yeah, so the first thing we have here is the drum bus. You heard without it and then with it. It just helps to sort of tie everything together. Gives it all like a more even sonic texture as well. It makes everything sound like it really fits together. And like it, it's all in one world if that makes any sense. And then the only other thing we have on there is just this EQ8, which is cutting out the line and also giving a bit of a high end boost. So here's without that. And then with it. So like I said, you know, in this style, you want that very sharp, bright kind of like it's just strong percussion with a lot of attack. And so boosting the high end is very good for that. It improves a lot of the clarity. And then the line cut just cleans it up. It makes room for the line in the kicks and in the kick and the basses. So that's me for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Once again, you can get the project file and samples and mini and presets and all that stuff in this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because it's already available. Thank you so much guys and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.